welcome boys and girls welcome to the stream another uh, what are we sunday night special can't believe it's two weeks ago and already 84 people in so i've got lots loads to get through tonight look i've got all these all these handwritten notes and jokes and stories from around thailand should be a good one tonight how are you doing i hope it's uh, not too cold where you are in the world it's uh, it's very hot in thailand at the moment very very hot uh, I've just been out for a meal with a friend and I bumped into a viewer, guess where, the Al Hussein Indian restaurant. I haven't been there for a week. Guy walks up to me and he says, I knew it was you. I've come here because of you. Good stuff. Right, okay, let's start saying hi to a few people. My microphone phone is up here. It's quite away from me, so you probably turn your volume up. If you remember, be careful when I do the competition because when the music comes in, it's like, bang, it's really loud. It'll blow your eardrums out. Okay, Martin, how are you doing? I just want to say uh, thank you very much to Mazza. Uh, you've given me a super chat there before the stream actually began. And that story just won't go away, will it? Here's 100 baht towards your lunch. Uh, I wonder if he still watches. I don't think so. I think I pissed him off, to be honest with you. Right, the Gormless tweet. Hi from Sydney. Uh, Anders Bergman, hi. I've just thought of something else. Let me make a note. Because I, I forget things you see, and I come up with something. I must tell them about that. And I'll write it all down now. Right. Mont Blanc pen, 100 baht, believe it or not. Look look at that, look, look. You know Mont Blanc? I don't know what they are real. The, the real ones are about, uh, I think they're about 20,000 baht. Pat Pong Market, 100 baht, £2.53. But it hasn't got the egg shape at the top, if you know your Mont Blanc pens. But writes really well, like a real one. Anyway, enough of fakes. We'll be talking about some other fakes later on today. Uh, that's a nice long message there. Yeah. Uh, Macmillan Nurse One. Hello, Peter from Saudi Arabia. Weather freezing cold here. Interesting fact, Thailand has become a favorite tourist destination for Saudis. Direct flights from Saudis to Bangkok now. There's always been a lot of uh, Middle Eastern folk come over here to Thailand. Uh, there's probably even more now. But what you'll notice, if you haven't been here for a while, what you'll notice, one of the biggest, the two, I think the two, Biggest lots of tourists here at the moment are the Chinese, mainland China, definitely millions of them. And surprisingly, uh, the Russians, they're everywhere. I went for a meal in a little restaurant I go to just on Soy 33 up there. And uh, Russians sitting here, Russian and his family sitting here. It's just, you know, bonkers. I suppose they want to get away from the war. Um, I just say thank you to Joyous Roma. Thank you, Joyous Roma. May the force be with you, Peter. Wonderful vid with Liam this week. I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about it. I'll just wait till I get a few more people in because that that's um, that was very brave of him, wasn't it? That video will be gone out to everybody else on Tuesday, I think, Tuesday or Wednesday, but members can watch it now and we'll talk about that in a bit. It's very, very brave of him. Um, okay, who else we got in? We've got... Uh, We've got a lot in. Uh, Geezers, Jason, how are you, mate? Yeah, I have been to that island before. Jason's, uh, he's just moved out here a couple of months ago now. He's doing the tourist bit. Had his bright red Chinese shirt on. Ch Chinese New Year here, by the way. Uh, it was yesterday, I believe. Uh, yeah, I've got a picture here. Let me just read this little article out. It's only three lines, but I, I always like to put a picture up with it, um, if I can find the bloody thing. Right, there we go. Let me get rid of his... Uh, there we go. I'll say hello to you in a minute. Right. OK, so uh, Chinese New Year, Saturday, the 10th of February, 2024. Fire, firecrackers and dragon shaped lanterns lit up across Asia on Saturday to celebrate the the, lun the start of the Lunar New Year, marking the trans transition of the Chinese lunar, lunar calendar into the year of the dragon as billions travel worldwide to participate. Well, do you know what? I actually remember the year of the dragon. It was a Bruce Lee film, wasn't it? A very good one as well, you know. I, those old 70s uh, kung fu films, I used to like watching them when I was a kid. But the problem is, once they start flying through the air and spinning and knocking out like a whole army by themselves, I used to get uh, uninterested then. But, yeah, welcome in, Jason. Good to see you, mate. Um, right, who else we got? Uh, Ty Billy Boy, hi to, hi to you. Uh, Colin Moore, evening all. Temperature has really turned up a few notches this week. Here comes a sweaty season. Since when did Tuk Tuk start? We'll put that up there. When did, yeah, when did Tuk Tuk start charging three times a normal tax? So they won't even be bargained down. Now. They're terrible. They're, they're the worst I've ever been. You know, the little Tuk Tuks, the three wheelers with the two stroke engines. And they all seem to have taken their baffles out of their exhaust pipes. Because when you're walking up Sukhumvit Road and one's got his foot down, I'm not talking one or two, I'm talking all of them. The, the, the noise from that two-stroke engine without the baffles in it is so loud, you literally have to stop talking and wait for it to go by. But you're right, they're just, they're just charging silly, silly money now. I mean, if you can get a taxi somewhere for 50 baht on the meter, they'll quote you 300, 400 baht, you know, 
Uh, I don't know why people still take them. I suppose if you've never been on one, they're a novelty and they're good fun to go somewhere. You know, there's nothing like flying through Bangkok at 10 o'clock at night with the wind going through your hair. But, you know, they, they just charge stupid money now, really stupid. This is what happens when I have an Indian on a Sunday. I shouldn't have gone for an Indian. I'll be that liter will be gone by the end of the stream. Um, and uh, I don't know why people use. I don't know why people use them as everyday transportation now. Because you've got Bolt, you've got Grab, you've got the BTS, you've got the Metro. There's just no need to get ripped off by these guys. Uh, Matthew, hey Peter, just back from Hua Hin and Patty. It was great meeting up with you and you, Matthew. And thank you for lunch. Very kind of you. Um, Right, Colin Moore invited me for lunch, that was. Uh, I paid my own lunch, but you invited me. But thank you. It's good to meet you. Right, Prince Fergus, good morning from Nevada on my way to California. I've done that drive uh, four hours through Death Valley. I got stopped by the highway patrol, but it was a good drive. Uh, Kev, 12364, hello from Royette. Greetings, Peter and all. Bernie uh, is in the house. Looking forward to a great stream. Hi, Bernie. How are you doing? Uh, Bob. Bob Gray. Hello, Peter, from a sunny Hertfordshire, UK. Good stuff, good stuff. Roger, good afternoon from Africa. Roger, where? Africa's a continent. Where are you? Uh, Shane, hello, fong, fellow Mongolians. Uh, Brian Street. How are you doing, Brian? Long time. Uh, I've seen you, I seen you a, a comment on one of the recent videos lately. I hope you're doing okay. Uh, Donald Trump, good evening to you, sir. Uh, I don't know why I call you sir. You're the only person in the stream I call sir. It's because your name is Donald Trump, but it's not really Donald Trump, if that makes sense. But good evening, sir. Right. Innovations. Good day. Kelly Harnett uh, from Vancouver. Hi, Kelly. Uh, Dick's Normis pumping it through. Uh, delayed Dave. Afternoon, Peter. Afternoon, everyone. Joyous Rome uh, morning. Uh, how are you doing? Um, there we are. Currencies are quite strong against the bar at the moment. Leave that there for a while. I am hot. Hang on. Hang on. Right, we've gone down a notch on the old aircom. We're on 22 now. We were on 23. Let's see how that suits. And I've got my brand new fake polo shirt on today. 250 baht from MBK. Four shirts yesterday, 1,000 baht. Uh, huge ass. Hello. Uh, it is six in the morning here in California, but I happen to just get up. Okay, well done to you. Nice early riser. Dini Sang, good evening. How are you doing? Um, Matthew Cartwright, Mazza, good to see you, Matt. Neil. The Monga Minute music is used on the Check a Trade adverts in the UK. I wonder if they got it from, from me. You know, remember the old Monga Minute music? Um, maybe. Uh, Anders Berg, Bergman, uh, he's saying hello to someone. All right, Bob, how are you doing? Stuck in uh, miserable London. Them fish and chips looked nice last night, by the way. I've just had. Uh, I've just been around to the Al Hussein. I had something different today. I had a... Uh, um, it's like a masala wrap. It's like a bread with chunks of meat in it and onions and everything wrapped up. Really good. 100 and, 100 and, no, 120 baht, so cheap meal as well. Uh, Franco, how are you doing? Uh, even though just in the pub having a quick one, but I'm keeping an eye on you lot. Yeah, Franco was – he did a stream with um, Phil the other day. I think it was yesterday. He did a uh, – was it today? So, yeah, they did a stream from the pub, um, Franco and – um, Phil and I had a couple of a couple of guys who I've um, banned trolls. There's a guy in particular called Martin Watson. He doesn't even show his face. He wears a mask and he's he used to troll the hell out of me. I think he's tried to sign me up to a load of stupid lists. And uh, he was in there yesterday slating me, you know. And uh, I've got a lot of support, thankfully. Uh, but you know, you these guys, <laughs> I don't know what they get out of it. Uh, but hi, Franco. Yeah, I'll we'll, I'll be meeting me and Franco. Hopefully, we'll be doing a stream on Wednesday because I'm going down to Patia this week. I'm only down there for two days. I've got to meet a lot of people. I've already got a load of appointments, so I'm going to have to get around really quick. But I'm hoping, not promising, hoping that Franco and I, if it's not too windy, we'll do a bit of a stream on the beach on Wednesday. I've done a, a stream on the beach before, uh, and it went all right. Uh, Kern, Kern Bells, did it pick the real Thai girl competition tonight? Yes, that's in the members area, though. Uh, mem members stream at quarter to 11. Um Brian Street, I bet there's a few Chinese about Happy New Year. Yeah, well, I've just I've just um, read a bit out about that, Brian. But they, when I went to, um, I went up to Soy Thirty Three last night. Took a bit Soy Thirty Three, and that new mall, the M Sphere, it must have had five hundred people at the front of it. I couldn't see what was going on. This is outside. There's a park there, so it wasn't the M Sphere. It was next to it. There's a park there. And uh, I could hear a woman speaking English on a microphone. There must have been at least 500 to 1,000 people. I went by on my scooter. and uh, But, yeah, I mean, they're celebrating it big. Any any excuse for a party here in Thailand? Uh, right. Um, Chris, Chris Card, Franco. 
Um, greetings from Jomptian from Bijan, I think it is. Yeah, how are you doing? Uh, Christopher Tate, hi, Peter. Hope you're all well and have a good week. Yeah, okay. Doug Grink, good morning from Maryland. Good morning, Doug. Kev, Peter, talking about being hot, would you do be, be able to live in Thailand without air conditioning? I think so. I think I could do it now because um, I went through a period where I wasn't sleeping with the air con, but what I found is you do wake up sometimes very sticky. You know, it's not hot where you're uncomfortable, but your body starts to get a bit clammy. And uh, I've started sleeping with the air conditioning on again now. But I never have, when I'm working on my PC sitting here, this is my bedroom um, outside next to Terminal 21. When I'm sitting here in the daytime, I never have the air con on. I've got a big fan there, no, a standing fan, and that goes all day. I don't have the air con on at all. When I'm watching TV, I've got another fan that's on the sofa, so I don't use the air con there. In the morning when I sit at my breakfast table and have coffee and look at all my uh, messages and I watch TikTok and stuff like that, I've got another. I've got three fans. I have another one there. The only time I'll turn the fan on is one when I'm sleeping, and sometimes when I'm watching TV after an hour or so, it's, again, it starts to get a little bit, Kind of, you just need a bit of cold air to just bring it down again, and then, it, and then you can put the fan on for another hour. You know, every in the lounge, sometimes you, you you need to just give it a burst of cold air. And don't forget, we here we just wear our shorts. You know, you're not wearing shirts or vests or anything. Um, okay, uh, Norman Ward, uh, hiya from Canterbury. Yeah, how you doing? Uh, no name. Good evening, Robin, the chosen one. Hey, Peter, happy CMY Chinese New Year. Glad to see you. Uh, well, yeah. Um, Turgi Johnson, good evening, all from Patham Tan. Is it Patham Tani? Uh, Michael Redman, I live North Patia. Yeah, Michael, young Michael, how you doing? I live North Patia, and it's been only Russians and Chinese buses going by. Uh, Michael's a teacher down there in Patia. He he speaks fluent Korean. I've met him for well, I bumped into him. We had a beer. I bought him, I bought him a beer over at the Red Lion on Soy Thirteen. But he's now living in uh, Patia, North Patia, Naklua. Actually, he's got a nice apartment overlooking the bay and uh, seems to be doing good with his job. So we'll we'll meet up again one day, Michael. But this time, I've just, I just, there isn't enough minutes in the day, you know. It's just, um, we, we will do it, though. Shane, don't mention the war. I mentioned it once, but I think I got away with it. Okay. Uh, Simon Yee, yesterday was the first day of Chinese New Year. You guys have come in late, haven't you? Because I've already discussed that. Um, let me just get rid of this. Um Okay, I'm doing a few of these uh, consultant things as well now. I've met a lot of guys recently who are going back. I met, a, I said I met a guy today, and he's been out here for a month. And I said, how are you doing? And he said, oh, I'm flying out tomorrow in the early hours. I'm depressed. <laughs> it just seems like when people leave here, it's such a depressing thing. And when they get their first few hours free and they're rested at home, the first thing they seem to do is go on to the booking sites and look for their next flight out here in the land of smiles. Uh, I'm so, I feel blessed. I'm so lucky that I live here now, you know, and I'm able to to kind of do it. I've been spending too much recently. Um, I was speaking to somebody tonight. I've got to curb my spending because I'm living like a, a tourist at the moment. Uh, I, I used to cook a lot of meals at home. I, I'm still doing that, but a guy's moved out here who lives very close to me, and, he, and I invite him. He invites me. And we've been going out eating, like you know, last night, a couple of yesterday, twice today, once. And you know, when you go out, it's like a tenner or nine pound, ten pound, or eleven, twelve dollars, and you do that every day. And I told him tonight. I said, "Look, you know, I enjoyed your company, and we can go out for a meal once a week, but I can't keep doing this because I'm just spending way too much. You know, a lot more than I want to be spending." Um, yeah, Kevin Lampard, how are you doing? Jeppy, take the metro train. Uh, is Pattaya or Bangkok good for retirement? I would say probably Pattaya is better, uh, jumped in especially. Um, the problem is with Pattaya, there's too much temptation, isn't there? You know, um, if you've got good self control, then yeah, it's great. I mean, Hua Hin is good as well. If you're very, very old, you'd like something a bit more quieter or cha -a. might be a little bit boring. I don't know. Um, I wouldn't get bored. Um, but yeah, Bangkok is kind of pricey now. You can live cheap in Bangkok as well, but you're never going to get cheap rent unless you live right out in the sticks. And then what's the point in living in Bangkok? You might as well move to a nice a nice beach town. Uh, Daniel Rubinti, Thai Bart is getting weaker as they talking about cutting interest rates. Thai economy could do better. Well, they've just cut the tax on wines now. Wine is a lot cheaper out here. I mean, you, they do some really nice wines in 7-Eleven and... Um, yeah, they've cut the tax on it. I don't drink wine, but I know because I was with somebody who does. Paul Hoskins, do you get up early to watch the sunrise? I don't, Paul. I'm not an early morning person. 
I do get up early occasionally, but I only talk about that why in the member stream. Uh, Robin, happy Super Bowl weekend, lads and mongers. Hope you're having a great weekend. I'm going to rush through these now because I, I think I'm a way behind. Um, Stephen Hilliard, hello, Blackburn, Lanc from Black Blank uh, Blackburn in Lancashire. Um, Steady Ed seems to be getting a lot of stick late lately. I, I don't watch him anymore. I used to be a great fan of his. Um, I don't know. You know, I was walking through LK Metro one day and some guy was sitting at a bar and he called me over and he introduced himself. And we were talking quite nice. And he said, what did you do to upset Edward? And I said, like, Eddie who? And he was like, you know. And uh, I said, nothing. <laughs> I haven't done nothing. You know, did he say it was me? No. But I don't. I don't. I've caught one or two of his videos here. I don't know what he's getting stick about because I don't read comments. Maybe you can tell me and I'll, 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 it will be interesting to know without slate, slating him, you know. Um Stephen, I can't get over the unseasonal rain and abacardville prices. I guess it's I guess it's a uh, global warming. Uh, Deepak, thank you very much. I didn't I just didn't see that uh, super sticker there. Five dollars, uh, much appreciated. Brilliant. Um, Stephen James, I still can't get okay. Uh, Paul Harrison, evening, Peter. The sun is actually shining here in the UK. Well, that's good. That's good. I like the UK when it's not freezing. Um, God, I'll have to fill that up later. One of the things this guy said on Phil, Phil stuck up for me, actually. Phil, Phil said Peter's a nice guy. There, there's a couple of trolls in there, so we're slating me, right? And this guy, Martin Watson, who's he's been a, tr a big major troll on my channel. I've blocked him everywhere now. Once he sent me one penny through PayPal, but he put a false name, right? Uh, you know, so I didn't know it was him, but I knew it was him because as soon as I logged in to look at the details, it had his real name there. That's how thick he is, right? And he didn't even show his face. He wears a mask. And uh, he was slating me off on Phil's. Um, he said what he actually said was he said two things. He said, firstly, I make up all the stories. They're not genuine. So five years I've been telling stories. I've made them all up. That was the first thing. Then he said I was a horrible person because I think I care more about my dog than I do my family. <laughs> you know, what I mean, come on. Right. Um, uh, now I've lost my place now. Toby Price, March, April, May, I need aircon at night. Simon Yee, speaking about fans, I don't see ceiling fans much. That's something something in the old days when you went to patio, you always had a choice, fan room or aircon, and the fan room was always cheaper. Um, okay, well, well, we did Deepak, so let's go back and see who I've missed out on. Uh, right, right, another one from you. You're saying... Hi, Peter. Can you talk about the festivities planned for Songkran this year? Giza's told me that it's going to be a big year. Okay. All right. I've got some notes on it. Um, I have made some notes on it. Right. So if you don't know what Songkran is, and I've prepared myself, I've prepared myself. Uh, hang on. I've got so much here. Uh, I've got a great story for you. I've got a few great stories, um, including the man they thought escaped from prison here, uh, but he'd actually just got lost in the woods. Um, okay. That's the jokes. We've got some jokes later. Um, Songkran. Right, we've done that one. Yeah, here we go. Right, so it's just three lines. So uh, you want to talk about Songkran, right? Uh, Thailand gears up for the World Songkran Festival. The Songkran Festival takes place April every year between the 13th and the 15th, right? Uh, I'll tell you more about it, but basically the official versions. Songkran is Thailand's most famous festival. It's an important event on the Buddhist calendar. This water festival marks the beginning of the traditional Thai New Year, okay? Not the Chinese New Year. And what everybody does, it's, it's a lot of fun if you're into it. So everybody goes out and they gather all over patio. It goes on for much longer in patio than anywhere else. And they have electric water pistols. Pickup trucks come around with big uh, buckets of water, drums on the back, and they're throwing them over each other. And it generally lasts anywhere between sort of four or five days here in Bangkok. It can last for seven, eight days in patio. But what they're trying to do, because they're really trying to... Um, they're really trying to encourage more tourism. Now, the tourism numbers are going up, but they're concentrating on they really want more ch mainland Chinese to come here because of the special relationship with Thailand. But what they're talking about is celebrating Songkran for three weeks in a row. Right. And do you know what? If you it's a lot of fun. If you right, if you wake up and you know, OK, I'm going to a Songkran uh I'm going somewhere where they're doing Songkran Day. For an example, Nana Plaza, okay, in the daytime, out on the road there, soy for A lot of people go there in the afternoon, a couple of hundred people, pretty girls, foreigners, tiger, everybody, and they're just splashing water over each other. They put paint on their face, and it's a lot of fun. If you've got anything, right, I'm going to make an afternoon of it. I'm going to get en enrolled in the culture, and I'm going to go for it. You go there, a couple of hours, big electric two-liter water pistol. You won't get one now. They're all sold out already. 
try and get an electric water pistol in Thailand now, you will not be able to find one, right? So you go down there, a couple of hours, three hours in the afternoon, you shoot each other with water, everybody's laughing and screaming. It's really, really good fun. Where it's not good fun is when you want to go to Big C and do a little bit of shopping, get some bread and some eggs and some bits and pieces, and you go out and you've had a shower, and you get to the end of your street and you get a, literally a couple of buckets of water thrown over you. You're drenched, okay? It's a hot country. It isn't a big deal. But what happens, you go into Big C and it's fully air conditioning. And I don't know if you've ever been in the air condition when your clothes are wet. It's not nice at all, right? Now, I'm not being a miserable git, okay? I've done it for years. I enjoyed it. I remember Pat Pong one year. I came out of one of the bars. There was a big tub of water on the floor. They just handed me a, an electric pistol. And I thought, why not? And I had, a, I had a whale of a time, right, from about 2 in the afternoon until 6. And it was great fun, okay? But when you're going out shopping or when you're doing some business or whatever it is, it's not very nice having buckets of water thrown over. Now, what I did last year, because I don't get involved in it anymore, okay? because i used to when i was younger here but i don't i can't be bothered to be frank now i'm not interested in it okay and so what i did last year it was only th here it was only about four or five days i live in a very long soy i'm right at the end so what i did is i stocked up on my beers and my food and all the rest of it during the day i didn't go out okay i just went on my laptop did a load of work and then it got to about seven or eight and by that time in the evening it's starting to cool the, the water fights are starting to cool off a bit and they're up the sucking bit area, not where I live. And I was taking a walk to the, bo the bottom of the soy where it was quiet and pop into 7-Eleven. We got a pool on the roof I was using for exercise. Song cram was over. Norm normality resumes, as they say. But if it's going to go on for three weeks, I mean, it's, I don't know. Will it peter out? Will people go on the street and throw water for three weeks? Uh, I hope that's uh, enough of an explanation for you, Deepak, because I was going to talk about that anyway. Uh, Bottle Baby, happy Chinese New Year uh, for all the Chinese. Harry Craft, retirement in Thailand, uh, laugh out loud. I don't I don't get that, Henry. What's the laugh out loud bit? I've retired here in Thailand. Lots of people have. Uh, Jerry Massey, good morning from Virginia. Morning, Jerry. Uh, I'm way behind. Let me see how far. No, no, we're all right. We're not too far. Um, Harry Craft, only ret retire where they have top medical. Thailand medical is not close. You, you don't know, honestly, I don't want to insult you. You don't know what you're talking about, honestly. Thailand medical facilities, hospitals here, I can't, they're, they're the best in the world. They literally are. The hospitals are so good here that thousands of people fly from the West to have dental work, to have implant implants, to have facial work. You get cancer treatments coming. You, you go to med. Park Hospital and see how many Arabs are in there, okay? You go to Bunamangrad and see how many foreigners are in there. It, I, I, I can't believe you said that. Thailand Medical is not top close to... Uh, you can't have been here, Harry. There's no way. You're thinking of somewhere like Bangladesh or something. You come here, the hospitals are absolutely fantastic. Give me a Thai hospital any day to the, the hospitals in England, 100%. You 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 want some dentist work. Um, you got a pain in your tooth in England. Your tooth will fall out before you get treated. That's if you're lucky enough to get on a list. And God forbid you should have to go to a hospital and spend, you know, 18 hours on a stretcher in a corridor while people are just running by and you can't even get a bottle to piss in, okay? Okay, yes, you pay for it here, but there's different levels. But all the care is very, very good. Uh, I'll do a little bit more research on that, Harry, before you make comments like that, honestly, because people will just come at you, uh, people who have been here. Right, Barry, Ace Card Sherbet, just back from a month in Patty, a long flight home was fantastic, okay? Always a shame you have to go, though, isn't it? Methy, Peter, do you watch Archley Luxury? Do you know what? I watched one of his um, videos, and I'll tell you why. Um, he, I know who he is. Oh, the old salt in the curry. I know who he is, and I know what his channel is about, and I've got nothing against him. I just don't – there's not many channels I watch regular, but I did watch one of his channels because somebody wrote to me one day and said he'd made a video about me, and I thought, ah, oh, here we go again. Somebody else is slating me now. So, of course, I went over to this channel to see what the guy was saying, and he actually made a very, very complimented video about me. It was that video I made about uh, – I sat. I just sat in a chair, and I talked to the camera, and I spoke for about an hour and explained – how I met my wife and we had the family and how we grew up and, um, you know, 33 years together and how I came, how I came to um, separate divorce. And I ended up at 62 living alone here in, in, in Bangkok. I just told that story. And uh, Archie made this 15-minute uh, video and he explained, it's on his channel, Archie Luxury, about me. Uh, and he was very, very complimentary. So that's, uh, I've watched that video. I know when he was here in Thailand, he used to get a lot of stick. I've heard he got a lot of stick. Um other than that, I don't really know much more. Uh, Dutch Buddha, how are you doing? Joyce Roma, where is the next ride along video on the motorbike? 
do you know what? that video didn't do that great and i really enjoyed doing it that was all where i just strapped a gopro uh, into the middle of my chest there and i did all the soys from soy three all the way up to cowboy and then back down the other side with nice funky music over the top but it didn't do great it's like the it's like the videos i do with marley you know i'm really surprised they don't do better um you know, we did a video. What was the last video we did? Is it safe to walk on soy four? Because that chi that silly Chinese girl upset the uh, Thailand Tourist Authority because she said she made a video and she said it's very unsafe for women to walk alone on Sukhumvit soy four, and it upset a lot of people. So we we made a take the Mickey video. You know, I went on one side of the road and Marley was on the other side of the road, and she was walking along. And but you know, they don't they don't kind of take off them videos with Marley. I just don't know. It's had like two or three thousand viewings. Um, Strange. I thought she it would bring a lot to the channel. Right, Charles Saunders. Good evening, Peter, and the moderators and everyone in the stream. Um, okay, Methy says he's just trolling you. Okay, uh, Cho, you're talking about the hospital guy. Yeah, he, he does. He's not been to Thailand as if he thinks the hospitals in Thailand are crap. Uh, Cho, Mary. Hey, Peter. The air quality in Bangkok is so terrible, according to the International Agency for Research on Cancer report. Thailand had approximately. 114,199 deaths related to cancer. Thanks for cheering me up. No, seriously, though, it, it is really bad. I, I use an air, um, there's a, a, a tower, a, a station to measure the, the air quality here. Uh, I'll tell you what it is now. It was terrible, yes. It was in the red at 129. I did check it today and it was moderate. It wasn't too bad, but it's, um, it's called air visual. So you can see today, I don't know if you can see that. So, that, oh, it's gone up again. Right. So when I went out for dinner this afternoon, it was 93. Right. That's the air quality tonight in Bangkok. 134. The safety level is something like 37 microns particles. Um, and that's what it is. And of course, I like to open my balcony door in the morning. So how long is it going to be like that for? You can actually it's like the five day weather forecast. You can actually uh, oh, bloody close it. You can actually um, get a forecast for the next day and plan what you're going to do. I don't know. I don't exercise in the park when it's like that. I don't go swimming. It's not worth it. Um, right, what's happened to it now? Places. There we go. So, yeah, so it starts to, it's not until 7 a.m. Monday that it's going to be 51 to 100. So it's not, it's still not great, but it's better than, yeah, right now it's, it's, it, your lungs will explode. Um, Right, it's up to you. Afternoon, Peter, from a roof, a roof in Cambridge. You're not going to jump, are you? Don't jump. It's not worth it. I have got a story called the Patia. Not, I'm not going to read it now. I'm going to save it for later. It's called the title is Patia Flying Club. Romanian tourist plunges to his test death from a hotel balcony. Wasn't that awful? The guy who jumped with the the base jumper. I actually seen the video this week, the uncensored version. Somebody had sent me that. If you if you don't know about it, I mean, I don't think as many people don't know about it. But there was a young guy in uh patia and he jumped from the 29th floor of a building uh he's a base jumper you know one of these guys who want, jump off tall buildings open the parachute at the last minute um and it didn't open and basically he he died he landed on the pavement and i'd seen the video that everybody was circulating where the guy jumps and then it was cut but somebody sent me the video where the guy who filmed him jumping off actually filmed him going down and you see the guy hit the pavement and it's not pretty uh, only a young guy, you know, devastating, really. But it's one of those sports, isn't it? You know, I mean, it's it's um, and what had happened, you see, he's got a rucksack on. And, you know, when you go up, the wind catches the chute and opens it up. Right. Well, the strap was was underneath his rucksack is, is I don't know what you call it in American. We call them rucksacks like a backpack. Uh, and I think that's probably what stopped it opening. Somebody said, why didn't he have a reserve chute? But you just don't, you don't have time because it's not like jumping out of an airplane where you've got four minutes before you hit the ground. You know, you jump from the 29th floor, you're literally on the ground in seconds, five seconds, 10 seconds. And if your shoot fails, you, you just don't have the time or the height to open a second parachute. Um, OK, right. How do we get onto that subject? It's that's it's up to you on the roof. Right. Um, Harry Craft, are you having a laugh? I hope you're um, referring to the hospital guy, uh, Richard. Uh, you've put a little more detail in there so we know who you're talking about. Um Okay, so let's just uh, get rid of this idiot. Okay, okay, he's a troll. He's gone. We won't see him again. Right, Paul Hoskins, uh, song crown. I love taking out my water pistol and squirting at the bar girls. Uh, Me Methy, lots of comments from Methy. Nothing better to do than wet each other. <laughs> he's okay, let me look at your next one. Okay, right. 
Okay. <laughs> Let's move on to some sensible comments. Barry Ace Card Sherbet. What a name. I I no, I soaked a bloke in a suit. I did that one year to a, a French guy. He got really pissed off with me. It was that time when I was in Pat Pong and I was outside. I think it's called the Star of Light. It's gone now. Uh, when you where food land is, you're coming out towards um I can't remember which end it is. I think it's Sar Sarawak, Sarawak. Anyway, there's a little bar, and I was standing there, and this guy walked by with a pair of trousers and a shirt, proper shirt on. I don't know why, I just I sprayed his backside, and he turned around and swore at me in French, you know. That's how I know he was French. Uh, Songkran can be very dangerous if the water is dirty, says Kev12364. Yeah, um, well, it's like um, Andrew Hammond. He went to India, and some kids were playing with water balloons, uh, and one exploded on his chest and the water went into his eyes and his eye came out and he had to have his sinuses removed. It was a big deal for him. He was in hospital for a while. Uh, be happy, Pat. I'll be watching later. Uh, little problems here in France. Okay. Kev, my Thai wife stays home around Songkran. She has no interest in it. I have no... I know a lot of people. I was talking to Bangkok Pat a few weeks ago, a couple of months ago, actually. He... And I said, are you going to make a video about Songkran? Because the younger guys do. There's young guys that they go out and they get into it and they make uh, videos. And, and, he, and he says, no, he says, I don't, I'm not interested. And I, I said the same. I said, look, I'm not going to make any videos about it. I, I'm totally not interested. And it's not because I'm a boring old, well, I am a boring old fart, but <laughs> it's just because I've been there, I've done it. And I'm still enjoying life in Thailand, but squirting people with water pistols just doesn't float my boat anymore. Okay. Right. Karam Farang in the jungle. It's when people throw water at me when I'm riding my motorbike that really pisses me off. And that's dangerous as well, yeah. And if you're if you're a foreigner, they seem to target you more. I remember I was down on uh, Ceylon Road years ago, and I was I was in the hotel bis, um, business with a core, and I was wearing a suit with a tie, and I was going from a Mercury Hotel. No, I was going from the Nova Hotel in CM Square to the Mercury Hotel, which is now called the Grand Palace, and I decided to take a tuk-tuk, and I was stuck. I come up to a junction and the lights were on orange, gone to red. I thought, oh, no, please don't go to red. And they went to red. A guy came from this side, a guy came from this side, bucket of water, bang. Absolutely drenched in my suit. So, yeah. Uh, Cho, is it Cho Mary? Air pollution in Thailand is regarded as a serious health risk. Thailand has approximately, okay, we've read that, haven't I? Bottle baby. Um, Song can be coming like flying these days. If they increase its length, it is similar to cramming more seats into a fixed space. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the, tradi the traditional version of Songkran, um, we did Songkran up in Kong Ken in, when, I, when we opened the hotel in 1996, and I had to go on my knees in front of the owner. I didn't have to, but you do it out of respect, okay? So the owners of the hotel, he, funny enough, he's a Chinese Thai multimillionaire um, and his wife and his family, and my boss, who was the general manager, they sit in chairs, and you go down, and you pour a little, you get a little jug, and you pour a little bit of water on their feet, and it's it's a kind of a ceremony, you know, it wasn't, it's not about squirting electric uh, water pistols at people, but that, that's how it's, that's how it is now. Okay, um, now let me just say thank you to, who who's that, who's giving me that? Let me try and get that up on stream. Uh, Jeff say, a little something towards the beverage fund. I can see it, Jeff, but I can't see it. Ah, oh, there we are. Put it there. Thank you, Jay. Very, very generous, as always. Uh, you're near, nearly enough for a meal there, uh, Jeff. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, Jerry Massey, how, howdy. Jim Hayes, hope you're avoiding all of the craziness out there this weekend. You're talking to somebody else. Anders Bergman. Uh, Jim Hines, good morning, Peter, from Las Vegas. A lot of fun, Las Vegas. Been there twice. Um, Paul Harrison, Mazza, the aircon AC always gives me a bad throat. A lot of people say that they say they don't like the aircon because it gives them a bad throat. I've never had a problem with that. Okay, over 200 in now, we're just over half an hour gone. Ah, right. Um, Paul Hoskin, will the air pollution affect you if you're walking about in Bangkok? Definitely, Paul, because you're breathing, you're breathing in very, very bad, dangerous air. And what I've, I haven't been swimming as much these days. Uh, I've been cycling around the park, around Benchikitty Park. And I managed to do it like for an hour every day last week. And I just looked at it. You can see the buildings. It's like kind of haze, you know. And then so when I, as soon as I see it's like that, I check my app and I think, no way, you know, I, I don't, I'll go out and walk somewhere. But I actually, for the first time in it since COVID, I wore a mask the other day. I had to, where was I going? Um, I can't remember. I, I think I went to Terminal 21 to pick up some bread. 
Uh, but it was so bad, I actually wore a mask. And I never wear masks, but I, I just thought, you know, it's, it's dangerous. Um, right, Stephen. Uh, Cho asked and answered already. Thailand's cancer death rates below. Okay. Robin. Uh, hate to bring up other YouTubers, but does anyone know why Chocolate Man in Thailand is now living in a van back in the States? Uh, I, I never took to that guy, uh, frankly. Uh, I had a little bit of an argument with him once. Um, I've got no idea why he's living in a van. Uh, no. <laughs> Deke. Um, hi, Peter. Hope you're well. I'm just out of hospital because gout and now walking with a Zimmer friend. Wow. I didn't know gout could go that badly because I used, my friend Simon gets gout like every other week because he drinks red, red wine. And I used to get gout once every three months. Uh, and I, I used to go to the doctor and he prescribed me some tablets. I used to take them three days later, it had gone. And for some reason, I haven't had gout for at least 10 years. But I didn't realize I didn't realize it could be so bad that you had to go into hospital and walk around on a Zimmer frame. That is bad. Um, here's 100 baht towards your lunch. Paul Hoskins, only if you're accompanied by a lady boy. OK. Uh, Ty Billy Boy, those large bike pumps like water pistols are so powerful, they would blow your eyeball out. They're getting that way, aren't they? And the tanks are two liters on them. You know, they just they put them into the the big drums. They got the point, the end of it in there. Flick a switch, it up, and they're ready to go for the next victims. Itchy nose. I'm gonna um. There's somewhere I want to go to. Um, no, I'll tell you about that later. Right. Okay. Um, Bobby Crush, fantastic stream. Oh, thank you, Bobby. <laughs> Haven't had any. I've only had two trolls in. They're both banned now. Uh, Milad. Ta, hello from Vancouver, Canada. Never been to Canada. Canada. Love to go. Um, okay. Uh, 4K chill vibes. Good evening to you, sir. Peter C. De Nick, is it? Hi, Peter. How's the weather lately? I miss Bangkok. Uh, Peter, surprisingly, it's it's actually pretty hot, you know, and we, we've had a very hot um, high season. You know, I remember last December, I remember last December, I'd already moved into this apartment. I'd gone back to England in February for three weeks to sell my house. So I was pretty much full time here during low uh, high season. And it was really nice. It was about 26 degrees. And when you went out in the evening, you could sit in outside bars and you weren't sweating cobs, you know, like, like you know what it's like here. But this year, we had about a week where it was really nice. The rest of the time, it's been so goddamn hot. And they're predicting temperatures this month and next month of 45 degrees. That is hot. You mix that in with a humidity of 86% as well. It's not a, it's not a nice um, atmosphere to be in. You know, you know it's hot when you go on your bike. Like when I go on my scooter and it's hot air going over me, you know, uh, it's really hot at the moment. Uh, Mama Bear, yes, he was getting bored a change. Well, how do you get... Okay, so how? Uh, okay, let me put that up and let me try and decipher that. How do you go from living in Patia with a Thai girl, having a wonderful time of your life, living there full time? How can you get bored of that and then go back to the states and live in a van? Right, each to his own, I guess. Cho Mary Mazza, it's a serious issue, but uh, Thai government and rich don't care. I don't know. I think the Thai government were they were talking about. Um, I forget. I read something that they were. They want, to, they want to stop. One of the major problems, I don't know if they're still going to do it, but one of the major problems is up near Chiang Mai when they burn the stubs in the fields, the sugarcane stubs, I think it's sugarcane. And uh, it's just like a, a, a scene from an a, a pot, a, a pop, I can't say it, apocalyptic. I've said it wrong, but you know what I mean, movie. Uh, it, and even like some Thai families move away for that month. Um, you know, it, it, it can be brutal up there. Uh, very bad. Right. Anton, how are you, sir? Right. So here's a man. I thought this picture, I thought this was actually the guy who's in the stream. And I met him in Soy 13 for lunch. We went to um, um, what the hell's place called the the sportsman. And we had a nice lunch there. And, uh, you know, I often meet viewers. I've met a lot of viewers the last month or so. Met one today. And uh, I always thought this picture, I didn't know who the guy was. And he explained it's from one of the early Star Treks. And he, and he looks nothing like this. But, uh, yeah, pleasure to meet you last week. Uh, Songkran Bangkok, Pat, loves feeding the stray cats. Uh, hate getting wet, so I'm not surprised. Uh, yeah, I agree. And, uh, yeah, good. it was good to meet up with you. And the funny thing was, uh, I'll continue to call you Anton, even though we know that, I know that's not your real name. The funny thing with Anton, we, he'd not, um, he's been here a few times before, but he'd never been to Patty. And he, he said to me, what's it like? And I said, <laughs> I told him, and I got a message. This was at... 
two o'clock in the afternoon. I explained what it's like in Patia. And I got a text message from him at 6 p.m. It said, uh, I'm on the bus. And I was like, to where? And he says, Patia. So I hope you had a good time with a few spinners down there. Prince Fergus, my daughter wants to come with me to Tarnam, but her mum won't allow me to bring her. You should bring her. You should bring her. Um, she's. She, it's, it's a different kind of trip. You know, my, when my daughters were young, they lived here, obviously, with us. And uh, it's still nice, you know. I mean, but if it's just you and her and you've got nobody to look after, then I, I suppose, yeah. yeah Baba bed. Uh Okay, Max Powers, first time commenting on the stream. Been watching on and off for the last two years. Thanks for all the great content. Thanks, Max. Uh, Mama Bear, I'm not, I'm not going to talk about him anymore, okay? It's, uh, you know, like, like I say, I had issues uh, with him before. Uh, Paul Hoskin, if it's 45 now, how hot will it be in the summer? That's what they're saying it will go to, Paul, 45 when it's very hot, but it will be starting from this month. So, uh, Prince Fergus, sorry about the first... Uh, comment my finger went off permanently uh no i did i missed that one it went straight over me kev mama bear why did he leave okay no i'm not gonna talk about him dr invisio hello peter great video of grocery store that cooks your steak that was a great tip yeah that was the m sphere that was a that's a great place for a meal i've never come across that's a, a video i put up lately so basically what it is it's the new shopping mall m sphere and they've got a fantastic uh uh, supermarket in the basement i mean they do everything steaks prawns and it, and it's a regular supermarket they do all the soft drinks beers noodles everything you get in a supermarket and what this dining concept is so you know these kind of like japanese restaurants where there's chefs standing there and there's a counter around them everybody sits at the counter it kind of looks like that right so what you do is you'll go up to like say the the meat counter you can uh, and you get I bought a steak, get one, buy one, get one free because I was with somebody we shared. So we had a nice thick steak each. And then what you do, they've got a vegetable counter where they've got all the vegetables, mashed potatoes, asparagus and all that. And you pick what you want. And then the guy gives that to the chef. And then you go off and get your beer. I've got a large, not a small, a large tiger, 56 bar. That's supermarket prices, right? And you go back, you crack that open. So you're sitting there having a beer. You've got your meat from the butchers, which was worked out like 200 baht a steak, but those really thick tenderloin steaks, okay? And the vegetables and all the rest of it. And uh, they charge you 100 baht to cook it. That's it. So you can pick up whatever you want, you know, bags of prawns, fresh prawns at supermarket prices. And then they cook it all for you. And, and it's like a restaurant meal. And we paid, I think it was a thousand baht for two of us. And we had these bloody great tender tenderloin steaks. Fantastic. That's in M Sphere Mall. But I've I've heard there's other malls that are doing it now. But the thing with the M Sphere is, is quality. It's real quality. Um, right, who's giving me that? Uh yeah, no, I'll talk about that now. Okay. Um, let me just say thank you. Uh, I'll put that up there. I'm getting through this water, guys. Right, thank you for the super chat, uh, Joyce Roma. Again, very generous of you. Right, so are you going to talk about Liam or save it for the member stream? No, I'm going to talk about it now. So I don't know if you're a, a regular viewer of this channel and you have been for a lot of years. I once told a story about a couple called Liam and Om. Okay, if you're a member and you've watched this already, bear with me because it'll be a bit boring for you. I'll try and get through it quick. So what happened was Liam was on something like Thai Friendly or Thai Cupid or one of the dating sites in Australia. He met a girl. They taught, they seemed to get on. He went up to Konkani Nissan, checked in a hotel. Uh, after a few minutes, she said, look, they've got something to tell you. I've been a working girl, a freelancer in Patia for eight years. The guy was kind of blown away. Um, but they ended up getting married. It's a long story. There's lots of twists and turns, okay? Uh, and they've been together for about 10 years. Well, I met Liam, not his real name, here in uh, Bangkok. And I met his uh, wife, uh, Om, who'd been working as a freelancer. Very happy together now. So he he was very brave. He, she didn't come on camera, but I met him in a, in a hotel near Asok, and um, I interviewed him. Now the picture is the quality isn't great because the lighting was crap, and I wasn't didn't have the experience I've got now, uh, and the sounds you can hear it. Oh, it's okay, it's okay. And in this video, he talks about how he met her, his feelings, what he felt like when she told her this, what you know, what advice he was getting, and it's a whole story. And it's fantastic. And he was so brave to go on camera and tell this story. And he was really worried that he'd get a lot of people slate him. You know, he was like, oh, I don't know. People are going to call me an idiot. And how can you marry a girl who's been working for eight years on the streets? And, you know, I'm a bit worried. And I didn't try and talk him into it. I said, look, you know, people will give the most 99% of people will comment um, what they think. You might get one or two idiots who come in there just for the sake of it, trolls. And they you know, they're going to say something stupid, nasty. I said, well, if I catch it, 
you know, they might do it in the night when I'm asleep. As soon as I wake up and I see it, I'll delete it. Um, but I've released that video to members only at the moment. And it's probably had a dozen comments and they've all been positive. They've all said, look, you know, well done. Congratulations. You know, I'm glad it's worked out. But the big test for him is going to be on Tuesday when I release it to everybody else. So um, it's a bit of a clickbait thumbnail, as always with me. It's The title of it is something like, I married a Thai street a, a Thai working girl was it a mistake that that's the title okay I thought it was a good title uh so that's what that's about so I, that comes out on Tuesday for everybody else uh, and I hope you're going to enjoy it. I know it's going to get a lot of comments but you might be quite surprised at what Liam talks about in, in the video okay and that's uh what this guy uh, Joyce Roma is talking about right um let's go back let's go back uh four chill chill vibes three of Simit friends are very popular van life channels and they traveled extensively through the whole okay right paul hoskins the star trek bar girl where all the girls killing killing to you i remember when i was a kid when star trek first came out i was only 15 uh i think it was about 15 so it was 75 and i watched star trek and you had all these girls in those little short skirts and remember what was the name like was it harara or harara the 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 colored lady or black lady i don't know how to say it now political correctness and they're uh, really sexy you know and for a 15 year old boy in 1975 it was almost watching star trek it was his it, it was almost what's worth watching it just to see those pretty ladies in skirts sound like a pervert don't i but that's how it was for young lads young guys in 1975 in the uk um toby uh right uh here's here's 100 baht towards you uh okay you're talking to paul right retirement dreaming Okay, I'm not talking about him anymore. Jerry Massey, okay. Uh, I don't know where that's come from. Right, Steady Eddie has got self-centered. I don't know, I caught, one of, I caught one of his videos the other day. I don't really watch him anymore, but it, it come up because I'm still subscribed to him, actually. And every time a video comes up, I have a quick look, see what he's up to. And he was in there, uh, a Utia, and uh, he was just basically walking around saying it's a great place. I don't know. Right, Richie Rich, good evening, Peter. You have... Um, you have to remember, Patty is a bubble. Uh, okay. Right, Kev. And he... D okay, we're talking about this guy all the time. Oh, no, I'm going to skip this. Right, Andrew, how are you doing? Good to see you in the stream. Uh, hi, Peter. Just joined the stream. Got the timings wrong. Okay, well, it's, just, it's the same time. I'm actually thinking of changing the times of the streams again because I did two ad hoc streams on a Sunday. You know I'm doing these streams every two weeks now. I do them 9 p.m. Thai time, and then the member stream is at 10.45. Um I did a couple of streams where it was one o'clock in the afternoon, two o'clock in the afternoon here. Uh, I had the windows open. I had a vest on, no green screen, just just decided to go live and see what would happen. And I had a, a lot of people come in, right? And the thing about it is when I do a live stream, because they date very quickly. They're not like videos. If you do a video like um, uh, 20 Helpful Tips in Thailand, that video can remain relevant for five years 10 years right if if there's not too many changes but when you do a stream nobody's going to watch a stream from three months ago when there was one last week okay so most of the live streams i've got a, a shelf life of about a month and most of my public live streams like this over the period of a month they'll do about five thousand viewings okay five thousand oh not everybody watches them live obviously uh, but the, what, what was really surprising is that the ones that did ad hoc, one of them's done nearly 10,000 viewings and the other one did 8,000 viewings. I don't know if it's because people enjoyed just the casualness of it, you know, just pressing go live, no green screen, nothing. Or was it the time that I was getting more people because it was the right time on one side of America or somewhere in the world? Uh, it just suited an audience. I was getting more people in. So I'm kind of wondering if I should change the live stream from 9 p.m. Uh, but then that, that what would happen then is people in the UK wouldn't see it until we're going to be six hours ahead. So if I did it at one, that would be 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. So, so that would go out at 7 o'clock in the morning on a, on a Sunday morning. So people in the UK wouldn't catch it live. So I'm going to have to think, put a poll out, maybe think about it. Um, Okay, Robin, uh, West Ham 0, Arsenal 3. Okay, right. Um, you could probably watch... Uh, does anybody know where to watch a Super Bowl, Bowl near Nana? Well, I'll tell you what. If you go to... Um, if you go on to Soy 13 into the uh, the sportsman, they got multiple TV screens and they show multiple sporting events and they sometimes stay open all night if there's a, a live 
you know, if there's a major event on, which they did a, a week ago or so. Uh, and if you're in there and it was about to start and you said, I want to watch this, they would put that on because it's, it's not for it's not like one channel and it changes every TV. I mean, they've got receivers for like each um, TV. So if you're sitting watching this screen, for instance, they can they can set that one to whatever sporting event you want. And they'll even turn the sound up, you know. So, yeah, I mean, that's a good place to watch any sport event. Right, Steve, Yoss Travels, finally made a stream. Hope you're well, Peter, and chat. That video you sent me had me in stitches. I, I can't believe it was real. It's too, dis it's too, uh, Steve, it's too rude. I can't even talk about it here. But, yeah, unbelievable what people get up to. Uh, Andrew says, West Ham are getting hammered at home. Okay, well, as a non-football fan, it <laughs> what can I say? Right, Jim Hayes, I still dream about moving there someday. And as far as the temperature goes, I grew up in Southern California and I currently live in Las Vegas where the temperature is often 110 in the summer. Right, uh, Jim, I can I can tell you something that's different uh, in Las Vegas and California to here. Now, I've been to um, California three times in the 90s and I went to Las Vegas and yes, it was very, very hot. But the big difference between like Las Vegas and here, you don't have the humidity in California and Las Vegas, not like you have it here. You can go into it. If you haven't got air con on and you step into the shower, you come out. By the time you've dried yourself off, you will be dripping again with sweat if you don't have air con on, right? I found when I was the desert heat of Vegas, it's kind of a, yes, it's hot, but it's a dry hot. You don't get that kind of moisture in the air. Here in Thailand, it's about 86%, the humidity rate. So it's a totally different kind of heat. And I really liked it in Las Vegas because, you know, it was hot, but it was it was nice. Whereas here, it's just, oh, here we go again. It drains the life out of you here sometimes. Um, Scott, look forward to hearing Liam's story. Yeah, support the guy. You know, he's very brave to come on here and talk about it. Uh, I don't know many people that would have done it, admitted to their wife as, you know, I married a freelancer, but, you know, plenty, it, it, you know, anybody can watch that video up from his work, his family, you know. Um, Ronald, hi, Peter. How are you doing um, to make more cartoons with Simon in the Future? No chance, Ronald. It was the biggest thing that happened to my channel, the Nat and Dave cartoons. It was fantastic. I was upset when Simon couldn't do it anymore because it it just was so good. It was on a par with The Simpsons, wasn't it? Um, Simon's very busy now with his factory. He's doing very, very well. And uh, they're, they're opening other outlets and he just hasn't got enough time. I never see him now. He, he's my best friend here. I told you I'd get through this, that Indian curry. He's my best friend here. Occasionally I go over to his place for a Sunday roast. We have it about 6 p.m. at night. But today he's with customers. Some guy flew in from Germany. So I haven't seen him. I'm lucky if I see him once a week. Sometimes I don't see him for a month. But um, he's very, very busy. Uh, and there's no way he said maybe one day he can do it again, but I can't ever see it happening. Um, I've had to, I've tried to have it done th in, in the Philippines, in India, but it just doesn't work. There's lots of elements to them that cartoon. You've got to know the mentality of the bar girls, Thailands, and Farangs getting ripped off. You have to know the whole scene, right? You have to know a Thai girl who can do the voiceover. You have to have somebody clever enough to use the software because it's quite complicated. The software. Uh, and if you send it to somebody in India, he might be the greatest tech guy in the world. But he's if he's never been to Thailand, he's not going to know how to tell the, make the stories. Because Simon used to write the scripts, you know. Um, so it's a shame. Brian Dawson, hi, Peter. Never been to Thailand, but spent three weeks in the Philippines and had a blast. Um, there's, a, there's always a discussion about which is better, the Philippines or the Thailand. And most people say the same things. Uh, the same thing. I know, guys, uh, I've seen Alfreda Jim in. I think I've missed the comment. But, Jim, if you're still in, uh, hi. Sorry I missed your comment. Um, Jim lives in the Philippines, but he comes over here for a week now and again because it's just, it's different, you know. Um, the Philippines is great. Uh, everybody, mo a lot of people speak English, but here the infrastructure, I'm going from what lots of other people have told me, okay. The infrastructure is better here. The local food is a lot better here. Communications, they don't have brownouts and things like that. Uh, and I'm not slate in the Philippines. I'm just saying it, it's completely different. Right. Um, Okay, you, Jason, you're a football fan as well. Uh, Gatherin, Gareth, is it? Lieutenant Aurora. Oh, that's it. Lieutenant Aurora. That was the dark girl. Yeah, she's a very sexy woman. Um, she's dead now. She died fairly recently. Fairly recently. Stephen James, 1975, must have come to the UK late. It was a late 1960s series. Yeah, yeah, it was. Um, probably did come late. Uh, retirement dreaming. You're still a bit young yet. Yeah? <laughs> right. Dr. Invisio, what's his name? 
Okay. I'm trying to get away from this guy in a van, right? Uh, Daniel Rubenetti, is it? Air quality in Thailand is a huge issue. Got to a point where it is a serious threat to health. Uh, not only burning season around Chiang Mai anymore. Look at Hua Hin today. I'm surprised Hua Hin was... It's really surprising that it gets polluted down there, you know, with the sea air and everything. Max Powers, um, for a first time going solo to Thailand, would you recommend Pattaya or Bangkok for a short one-week party lifestyle? Definitely Pattaya. When you land, you haven't got time to explore Bangkok. If you're only here for a week or so, what I do is fly into Sawanaporn Airport, okay? There's buses that go like every half an hour into central Pattaya. Download the um, the Bolt uh, or the um, the other one, the taxi apps, Bolt and um, – God, I can't believe I forgot it. Um, I've got to look it up now. There's two apps that you can download here. It will come to me. I'll look up. Somebody will tell me. So you can get the bus from Sawanaporn straight into Central Patia. You you um, you get a taxi and and you're there. And it's a great party town. And it's a lot cheaper than Bangkok. If you go out partying here in Bangkok, I'll give you an example: a small bottle of Heineken and a Gold Bar. You're looking at 180, 200 baht. Okay, in Patia, you're lucky if you pay over more than 60, 70 baht. That's even in a Gold Bar. Okay, uh, you'll get full English breakfast or American breakfast, whatever you want to call it, all day for. I don't know, 120 baht, 140 baht. Here you're paying 300 baht for it, you know. Um, you can live cheap in Bangkok, but for the party scene, and it's the same with prices for entertainment, you know what I mean, right? Um, but, oh, baby, I just, I just, th I thought it just had a better vibe, okay? Uh, Yours Travels, Arsenal 4-0, okay? So a lot of people watching football, I'm on the sideline. Uh Here's 100 baht towards your lunch. Uh, why not do two streams and cover both times? It's very, very difficult, you know, because I spent, I prepare a lot of things for the stream. You know, like in the member stream today, I've got the Ladyboy competition again. I've got, um, you know, in case it dries up and goes a bit quiet, I've got pages of art news, which, again, I'll probably keep for them. Uh, I've read a couple out here. I've got a load of jokes prepared. Uh, okay, so let's talk about some other stuff. Not news. This is this is personal things that I've seen this week here in in um, Thailand. I've just made a few notes on paper there, like very Nathandrial. Is it dinosaur? Very old fashioned. Um, Stephen, uh, getting it on with the ladies. Uh, yeah, it's kind of my thing. Okay, right. Okay, let's. Let me just talk about a few. I'm gonna. There's a lot of guys talking to each other, so I can skip uh, some of the most of these comments. They don't understand why John John K. Don't understand why he would out his. This is a bit. You need John. Uh, John, uh, you need to watch the video, mate. Honestly, they they actually discussed it and decided to do it together. The reason they wanted to do it, um, I won't. Okay, I'm going to try and answer this in a really sensible way. Okay, so I spoke to Liam about this before we did the interview. And I said, you do realize that uh, his wife, first of all, his wife isn't in the video. So nobody knows what she looks like. Okay, I've met her. But it's not like you're going to walk down Sukhavit Road and say, there she is. I know all about you. That won't happen because she's not in the video. It's more the reason he did the video, because, you know, you've heard all these crash and burn stories that get sent in to me, right? The reason he's he's, he's made the video is because he's trying to say, look, at the end of the day, yeah, okay, she was a freelancer for eight day, uh, eight, uh, eight years, but I was no saint. You know, I, I was banging girls all over the place. Um, but it worked out. It is possible. And he explains in detail about the emotional feelings that you go through and how they got to the point. And they've been married like 11 years, and they're really happy. they got property in Australia. She works full time. She pays her taxes. And I think before you're kind of like, make any judgment on it i think it's important that you go off and watch it let me see you're not a member no so you haven't oh you are a member okay look you need to watch it uh and then decide but that's just what what he decided okay and at the end of the day it's his choice um right so i want to talk about a couple of things that i make notes in the week things i see when i'm out and about that I'm, i just shake my head okay you know what a karen is don't you everybody knows what a karen is it's a woman that feels self-entitled and she talks to shop employees like crap and you know she'll stand in a car parking space so that her husband that's five miles away can have it and you can't park there you know they just you know they 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 complain when you put a fence two inches too high on their borders they're just horrible horrible women right 
Now I'm going to call this woman a Karen. So I, I occasionally go to a place called the, the pizza. I think it's called the pizza factory or the pizza company. Okay. Now they've got branches all over um, Thailand. Now I went with a friend and I live around the Nana area, right? So I have to walk up to Sukhumvit. You get to Soy 3. Okay. That's opposite Soy 4 where Nana is. And there's a couple of zebra crossings can be annoying yet. They take ages for the lights to go. So we're standing, you've got the Nana shopping mall. Okay. This is only three days ago. So we walk up Sukhumvit. We get to the, the zebra crossing that if you cross over, you've got the Nana Mall, which is on the opposite side from uh, Nana Plaza, Soy 4. And you go in there, and in the corner, you've got this pizza uh, factory, okay? So we get there, and there's always it's always a busy, busy junction, okay? There's six lanes, one going this way, one going straight, one turns right, but it goes wide right. And then there's, a, it might be five lanes, a couple go this way, but it's always extremely busy, always. It's never quiet, Okay. And it's a dangerous crossing if you, you know, you've got to watch them lights, okay? So we get there and the lights are on red. And as usual, standing, right, on the other side of the street, there's probably 15 people waiting to cross to our side. And on my side, uh, there's probably 12 of us waiting to cross. And all the cars are parked on red and they're waiting, okay? But the two lanes at that end are flowing slowly. This woman, she takes it upon herself to just ignore the lights and starts walking out in front of all the cars, the park ones. She gets into the middle of Soy 3, the lights change, and she's stranded. She's standing there like a lemon. And, and if you've been to pa Bangkok and you know them lights and you know that junction I'm talking about, I couldn't believe it. I was stood there. I said to my the friend I was with, I said, look at this woman. You know, look at her. She was just stood there. She couldn't go back. She couldn't go forward. And she literally had to stand there until the lights changed. I mean, unbelievable how some people are. Um, I thought you might find that interesting. Um, I got pissed off in, well, I won't mention the outlet. It was a fast food chain, okay, burgers. I won't mention which one it is, but there isn't, uh, it was a chain, a big chain, okay. So I goes in and I, uh, I'll give you, a, I'll make up the price because otherwise it will give it away. But a, a local fast food chain, uh, I, fancied, I fancied a burger, okay. Every now and again, you're in time, but you fancy a cheeseburger or something. So I went in and I'm looking up and they got the sets, right? Set number one, set number two, set number three. And I look. Look at set number one, and yeah, it's Diet Coke, uh, small fries, quarter pounder. That'll do me. And let's just say it's 200 baht, okay? Guy, bit of English, comes up, uh, asks me what I want. I says, I'll have number one. And it says in big letters, 200 baht, okay? So he starts cashing up the cash register, and he, and he says, uh, say that's 200 baht. He says, uh, 239 baht. And I went, eh? He said, 239 baht. And I says, it says up there, 200 baht. It says king size, king size. I says, I didn't ask for king size. I asked for set number one. I didn't say super size or big, you know, make it bigger. And what I've worked out is this particular outlet, because it's all foreigners going in there, they don't ask anymore. They don't say, do you want, you know, like in England, they'll say, do you want it? Uh, do you want a bigger size, bigger cup, bigger French fries and everything? Everybody goes in there, they pick the set and what they do, they just automatically give them the big one. Okay. So when you come in, guys, if you, when you're here and you want your fancy burger and you go into one of these big chains, make sure that you get the price off the menu, order it, and you watch what the guy cashes up on the till. And you'll find they'll try and charge you for the higher amount, okay? I didn't pay it. When I pointed it out, right, he didn't like it. He really didn't like it. And when my tray of food came, he literally just pushed it across the counter at me, you know, and I thought, you, for a Thai person to do that, you know, so be careful. Um what else? What else? Okay, a few other things here, but we'll have have, have a look at some comments first. Um, Craig Mitchum, uh, still no news on the 90-day free visa uh, for the UK. Do you think we'll ever get it? Who knows, Craig? It's, you know, things happen in Thailand. You know, you get things come out. It's big news for a week. All the news channels are talking about it. Everybody's making YouTube videos about it. Then you never hear about it again. That's just how it is here. Um, okay. Um, Adam M says, Bolt only in Pattaya. No, Bolt are in, pa Bolt are in uh, Bangkok, unless you meant to say Bangkok, because I've ordered I've ordered Bolt here. Uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the other one. You've got Bolt. Uh, no, that's it, Bolt and Grab, and Bolt tends to be the slightly cheaper one. Um, Mazza, how are the daisies? <laughs> they were the days. They were great days. I, was, I used to really enjoy those live streams, you know, um, 
you know, they would go on for three hours. You know, we're all cooped up, weren't we, during COVID, and everyone had a too many, too much to drink. And you know, I used to prepare the streams, and yeah, they were they're good old days. They were right, Bar Barry Bluebird. Uh, just a quick reminder: if you're coming to the stream late, I'm going down to Patia on Tuesday. Um, uh, I'll tell you. I'll tell. I'll expand on that in the member stream. I don't want to talk about too much personal stuff here. Um, I'm going down on a Tuesday and I'm coming back on a Thursday, but Franco's down there at the moment. So I'm going to meet up with Franco and hopefully, no promises, but hopefully we're going to do an ad lib stream together from the beach in Central Patti. I did one last year by myself in Jumpty. And, and uh, you know, I was sitting on the beach and I thought, I wonder what happened if I just pressed go live. It was about two o'clock in the afternoon. Was it two or four? It was about two o'clock in the afternoon and I was I was toying with the idea and I thought, oh, well, I've got nothing to talk about. You know, I'm just sitting here in a in a chair watching the world go by. And I thought, oh, bollocks to it. Why not? And I just pressed go. Oh, I got 200 people and it was a great, one of the best stream, streams I've ever done. Um, so I'll try and do that with Frank on Wednesday. Um, he did one with Phil recently, which is OK. Uh, Kev. Uh, Peter, if I can say so, you're looking slim. Just need firming up a little. Somebody else told me that the, 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 today. I actually have lost a couple of kilos, and I have been exercising. I'm, I'm, believe it or not, I'm 64 in April. I can't believe it. Honestly, I, I think, okay, I do get a bit more tired. I need a little bit longer to sleep. The old joints hurt. When I bend down to get something from under a table, it takes me about two minutes to get down there and three minutes to get up again. When, when I was young, I just go quickly, you know, but... I don't feel 64, you know, I, like I just don't, you know, I mean, it's, it's really weird getting closer to that magic number. Uh, D, good on Liam for telling his story. I hope he gets lots of nice supportive comments. Um, Napoleon blown apart. Hey Pete, how are you doing? How many lengths of the pool this week? I, I've just been talking about that because of the pollution. It's really bad at the moment. Uh, I haven't been going out on the bike and I haven't been going to the pool. And it's not through laziness. I actually want to, uh, but I just don't want to take in deep breaths of air in, in the pollution. I'm in central Bangkok. You know, it's really bad at the moment. Some days it's kind of low. It goes down to 60, 70, which is low for Bangkok. But at the moment, it's terrible. Here's a hundred baht towards your lunch. Right. I'm going to say something sensible to you. Thank you very much for sending me four episodes of Masters of the Sky. I really enjoyed watching them. And episode four, the last one, was nice and clear, much clearer than three. And I look forward to getting episode five. Brilliant series. Brilliant. That's an Apple series at the moment. I haven't got Apple. Uh, so um, you very kindly send them to me. Barry Lim. Um, back in Bangkok from Koh Samu, Kanchaburi, etc. I have discovered Suda restaurant Soy 10. It's actually Soy 12. Uh, opposite Terminal 21, nice Thai food, a little over the street uh, street food prices. Yeah, it's actually it's actually on Soy 12 uh, Suda restaurant, and it's great prices. If you go there lunchtime, it's easy to get a table. Nighttime, it can be a struggle because it's very popular. It's in the um, the Lonely Planets guidebook, and you'll find it's full of Koreans, Japanese. Uh, it, it, you go about 7, 7.30, it's really difficult to get a seat. Right, okay. Uh, Michael, um Hi, Peter. I love Star Trek as a kid. William Shatner still going at 92 years old. Amazing. Isn't it? Do you know what amazed me about Star Trek when I was a kid, uh, 75? Uh, it was in color. So I don't know if it was from the 60s. Um, did they have color in the 60s? I don't know. But what you, what amazes me now is all the things they made up for the show. And we've actually got now. I mean, the flip phones. Do you remember, I had one of those. Motor, do you remember the Motorola phones? It flipped open and you had a little area that pulled out. And they used to have that um, like a fake one on the show. Uh, really, really um, good how some of it's come true. I can't think of the other stuff, but there were some other bits. Uh, right. Okay. So, Daniel Rubinti, you've written that three times, and I have read your comment out already, so I'm going to skip by it this time. Franco, just finished my pizza. We'll be heading home uh, ready for the member stream. Good stuff, Franco. Glad to see the diet's going well. Uh, Scott G, Peter, your live stream is back in the UK. Some Sometimes got messy. Yeah. Do you remember the one I did with Ed, the five-hour one? That was good. Andrew, it's not as though the extra, yeah, it's not as though the extra burger money is going in the cashier's pocket. It's going into Ronald McDonald. Well, I didn't say it was McDonald's. So there's a couple of points on that. Um, I didn't say it was McDonald's, and I'm not saying it's McDonald's now, okay? But yes and no, because the cash isn't going into his pocket, but they have targets, and they get rewarded. So if you get one particular outlet, it's a chain at the end of the day, and the heads of those chains that sit in offices they're thinking of con um, clever ways to get their sales up, okay? Because it's a competitive business. Now, 
they reward their staff. They give them targets. They'll give the manager of the store a target, and the manager of the store will give each individual. How many times have you gone into a 7-Eleven in Thailand? You've got your food, and the, and the girl points to something on the counter. And she said, promotion, promotion, two for one, buy two for one, mister. It happens to me every day, right? So they have targets. So, yeah, the, that 40 pence doesn't directly, or 40 baht, doesn't directly go into the cashier's pocket. But at the end of the day, if he, for instance, if it's only that guy who does that, rips people off, then he, everybody's sales are going to be like this. He's going to be like that, isn't he? He's going to be a superstar in that outlet. So that's one reason. The second reason is perhaps that whole outlet get motivated with some kind of a prize. So, yeah, in a way, it does go in his pocket. Uh, not the cash, but in other ways. That's why they do it. Or, or, what would motivate him to do it, Andrew? Think about it. Why would he rip me off, try to rip me off uh, if he wasn't motivated to rip me off? If it, the cash not going in his pocket, there has to be a reason, right? Right. Uh, Chol, Mary, Pete, can you... Uh, can you why there is so many scams from Thai people, even though it's a Buddhism country? Um, I don't think it's particularly worse here than anywhere else in the world. You go to London, uh, foreigners get scammed there. New York, they get scammed there. Don't forget, there's no welfare system here. There's a lot of poverty. A lot of people come down from the north, uh, rural, rural areas. Uh, they come down with great expectations to get high paying jobs. It doesn't always work out. Uh, they end up in the... Um, you know, the entertainment industry or the some kind of um, industry that doesn't pay a lot. And, you know, this is, uh, you know, foreigners have got a lot of money, haven't they, when they come here to spend on holiday. And if they can scam somebody out of a few hundred baht or even a few thousand baht, then they're going to have a go, aren't they? But one thing about Thailand, it's very, very safe. I've never felt threatened here. I can walk down Sukhumvit Road at three o'clock in the morning or any other road and nothing will happen to me. In, in 30 years, nothing's happened to me. Yeah, people try and scam you. If you're silly enough to fall for it, you'll get scammed. But nobody will pull a gun out on you. Nobody will, um, you know, hit your mother on the head with a brick and steal a handbag like they would in London. Nobody's going to pull up to you next to, if you're driving a car, nobody's going to pull up to you, smash your window and grab your Rolex watch if you're lucky enough to own one. Um, right, uh, Real Rini, I forgot the live stream. Greetings from the carnival in Rio de Janeiro, the greatest party in the world. Yeah, absolutely. Steve P. Franco looks great for his age. What's his secret? <laughs> Don't tell him that. His head will go, you know. Right. Barry Bluebird. Peter. Um, Peter, want to hire a bike for going around Lumpini and Bench Kitty Parks? Is there any bike hire places in Nana area? Barry, honestly, I won't bullshit you. I, I honestly don't know because I didn't look into it. Somebody got me into cycling here. There's a guy called Steve moved out. He's a serious cyclist, okay? And he said, you want to get out there in the park? It's great. They've got a proper cycle track. And I said, well, look, I'll get a bike. Can you show me the work? You know, and he was like, yeah, yeah. So I went to, um, what's that company called? Above above Lotus on Rama 4, Decathlon. And I got a cheap bike, 5,000 baht, 2,000 baht of extras, like a stand and a mirror and a pump and, you know, the thing. But it's pretty cheap, really. It was about 180 pounds. And I never looked into hiring one, but I'm sure if you Google it, or when you're here, you go onto Google Maps and you put bicycle hire outlets near me. There will be, there will, they'll have them here because you know the ties any way that it's possible to make money. A, a tie will, will make money, uh, including renting bikes. Richard, Peter, will you still need me? Will you still feed me when I'm 64? Exactly. I know the song. Who sang that? Will you still need? Is it? Will you still need me? Will you still feed? Was it the Beatles? Uh, J and D. Hello from Columbia. Hello. Broadcast Dave. Uh, hey, everyone. George Brooks. Uh, when you exercise, your bones gain density and you gain muscle mass. I lost two pant sizes in a year, but my weight stayed the same. Don't get discouraged because of what the scales say. No, I know. I, I do. I looked at some of my older videos today and I, I've lost a lot of the puffiness in my face. I've still got a lot. Um, and also, you know, I seem to have lost a bit of density here, you know, Um so, yeah, and I enjoy it. You know, I, I'm not a sort of person who can go to the gym and say, right, I've got to do 50 of these, and now I'm going to go on the, the rowing machine. I've got to do 50 of these, and tomorrow I'm going to make it 55. I just get bored. You know, the numbers increase, 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 and before you know it, you've got to go for two hours. You, you're sitting in your apartment and you think, oh, I don't want to go up there for two hours. But, you know, if you go out on a bike or you play tennis or you swim, and, you know, I swim for 20 minutes, half an hour. I go out on the bike for an hour, but I take breaks and stuff. And it's, it's a nice, you know, and you're getting your exercise, aren't you? The other big thing I've done as well, I've stopped eating at night. I used to be a 
terrible for it. I used to have drink a few beers, watching Netflix. It'd get to midnight. I'm starving. I'd, I'd, I'd get a pot noodle out and I'd eat that or I'd make a cheese. And I've got all the gear here now. You know, I've got one of these toasters, cheese and onion toasted sandwich. Well, you know, that's like in second place to a greasy kebab, isn't it, when you've had a few beers? Uh, I don't do it anymore. Ronald, of course, they get rewarded for upselling. Uh, that's for you, Andrew. Look, of course, they get rewarded for upselling. Same everywhere. Would you like fries with that? They do. They do get rewarded. Um, Mr. Mike, planning a trip for low season in July. Very surprised that airfares are nearly double in low season. Uh, RT from San Francisco, 1500 uh, That old uh, that old elephant in the room, the price of airfares. Kev, I remember once I, I, uh, I went to Amazon for a coffee set down near a tire man. He gave me a dirty look, got up and walked out. That's really unusual. I remember once I went to an, an Amazon. Amazon is a very big coffee shop here. Uh, sat down near a Thai man. He gave me a dirty look, and he got up and worked. Well, up to him, isn't it? You know, he doesn't own the shop. One of the one of the scams that's going on at the moment, and it's kind of a newer. I mean, it might have been going on for ages, but I've only sort of. I was out walking. I got. I bought some glasses, right? Not these. Are you right? I'm going to have to tell you the whole story now, and I right. They're for reading. These are for the PC. I had another pair for the TV, and I had another pair for driving. Right. Cheap glasses I paid a couple of hundred baht for. I was sucking it wrong. I was constantly changing glasses. I'd be sitting watching TV. I must remember I was talking about the scam. Let me write it down. So you know me, I'll forget. Um, you know, I'd be sitting watching TV with one glasses. Somebody would send me a text message, off with these glasses, on with them glasses, read it, answer, back on with these glasses, watching TV. Two minutes later, he writes again. It's like terrible. Anyway, I finally bit the bullet. I went to a proper, proper opticians, had my eyes fully tested by proper... Uh, a real kosher shop, and I paid 20,000 baht for those glasses. They're, they're, they're three plus three at the bottom, and they're one at the top, and they merge, and you can't see any joins. Like in the old days, you could see a half circle in the bottom. There's none of that. They're just um, 20,000. It's a lot of money, but they're great. So let's get to the scam bit of the story. So I'm walking to the optical. It's just past the Planchet Center, Soy 4, Soy 2. Go a bit further down. It's where the uh, BTS, I forget the name of the station, uh, Ponchai, something like that. And it's there on the left. And uh, so we're walking down there and this guy, and I've had this happen to me before near Nana. So uh, my friend was ahead of me and I looked and he was talking to a Thai guy with a, a bag on his back and he looked all friendly, the Thai guy, about 40. And uh, afterwards I said, well, what, what was that about? No, it was funny actually what he said. So this guy spoke really good English, this Thai guy. And this this is what I happened to me as well. So he, he said to my friend, he said, oh, you know, I, I've got to go back to Isan tomorrow. I've lost my job and I don't have any money. Could you help me? Just I need to get the bus. Could you help me with something to help me get the bus back home? Now, I said to my friend, I said, I've had this exact same thing said to me. Just tell him no. My friend turned around to him. Honest to God, hand on heart. He said, your English is very good. He said, you could get a job in any embassy or translation service. He said, if you went down to immigration, foreigners would pay you 500 baht just to translate a document. Why are you on the street? And he's like, oh, no, you know, I just lost my job. I've got to get back to my family. But it's, it's bullshit. It's a scam. So don't fall for that one. Um, let me tell you about this one from the Patia Fl Another joins the Patia Flying Club. Um, I've got a picture on this one. Um, let's get the picture up. Right, here we go. So this is a story I got from the Patia News. Um, a 63-year-old Romanian tourist became the newest addition to the Patia Flying Club when he met with a fatal end after falling from the balcony of a seven-story hotel in Soi 5 Patia. The incident, which occurred yesterday morning, has left the local community in a state of shock. Authorities were alerted to the incident at approximately 9.30 a.m. and swiftly arrived at the unidentified hotel. Tragically, they discovered his lifeless body, the lifeless body of the Romanian man whose identity has been withheld until his family and embassy have been notified. The victim had suffered severe head injuries and dislocated limbs, leaving no chance of survival. Cording in off the area, police and rescue workers carefully transported the victim's body to a nearby local hospital. The victim's devastated wife was present at the scene, visibly, visibly overwhelmed by the tragic turn of events. However, she chose not to make any statements to the press during the distressing time reported by the Patium, uh, the Patia News. I mean, Patia has got to be the capital of people going off balconies in the world. I mean, it's, it happens so often, and it's always uh, an accident or suicide. Um, just see if there's anything else interesting for you here. 
Okay, I'll save them for later. Right, okay, let's get a few more comments. I like the story about the prisoner who uh, supposedly escaped and then they found him again. Um, Robin, Peter, you look great. As long as you feel good and healthy, that's the most that matters. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say I feel good and healthy. I, I'm still drinking too much. I, I came on and said, I'm going to knock it on the head New Year's Eve. I didn't. Um, but we're all, in, we're all in the same boat, aren't we? There's too much temptation out there. Uh, I think if you do some exercise and you, you, you pull back on some of your bad uh, habits, like me, I used to eat every night which I don't do now, and I'm exercising, the next step I've got to do is eat healthy food because I'm just eating shit all the time because it's tasty. I haven't been for a curry for a week. This is the first time tonight. That's why I'm drinking so much water um, because they're deadly. Um, right, yours travels. Even table tennis gets the heart pumping and feeling. Yeah, I'm going to go and play pickleball. Have you heard of pickleball? I've never heard of it before, but it's like tennis, but a miniature version. So you got the net, a smaller bat, and it's, you know, and I used to play tennis when I worked in the hotels. Uh, you can play it for free in Benji Kitty Park. They've got a pickleball court, a few courts, and then there's a, um, a sports club at ASOC that's got air conditioning. Just haven't got around to it yet. Uh, Shane, uh, no, having to go, Peter, but you definitely don't have to be in the gym for two I was 45 minutes. When I was younger living here, when I was about 35, I used to, I used to live on Soy 24 back then, and there was a gym right at the end of the road. Uh, and I used to, I, I used to, I had a little Kawasaki, I had a Kawasaki 125 motorbike. That's the biggest bikes you could get here back in the day. You, they, you couldn't get bigger than 125. And I used to go to that gym three times a week. And uh, yeah, it was okay. My, I got firm and it, it was all right, but I don't, I, I don't want to do it now. I want to exercise, but I want to enjoy the exercise. Um, I know somebody who goes to the gym here, and every time I phone him up, he's like, oh, I hate going to the gym. I don't want to go to the gym, but I've got to go to the gym. And he, and he hates it. You know, it's like, it's like, you know, I'll say, where have you been? He said, I've just been to the gym. I'm so glad it's over with, you know, because he knows it's important to exercise. He's a doctor, an ex-doctor um, from the UK, and he knows it's important to exercise, but he he hates it, basically. <laughs> right. Um, uh, Kev says, I think you will find get more scams in the philippines okay only been there once i don't know walking in my shoes thailand yo what's up guys uh have you have you got a youtube channel because i think i've seen one of your videos the other day let me have a look at you yeah i'm pretty sure i did look at one of your videos right kev uh philippines is more dangerous <laughs> kev what's happened to you in the philippines mate uh welsh 32 colid b i don't even know what that says colid b i don't know uh Mazza, but did he fall? He just said it was he said it was an accident, didn't he? I don't know. Well he definitely fell because he's dead. Um oh they're the jokes, you don't want to hear them yet. And there's a story about a tourist who opened a pair aeroplane. Bloody idiots. A guy who opened an aeroplane door in Chiang Mai Airport because he said he heard a noise under the plane. I'll read it to you later. Uh did he did he a 60 year old Romanian tourist became the newest district uh, it doesn't say. Okay, it doesn't say. It doesn't say. Then maybe just it's still investigating it. Um, Andrew B. On the high airfares into Thailand, there must be 20 massive 747 and A380 aircraft parked and fading in the sun at Bangkok. I can imagine how many seats a week they aren't available to be sold. Thai Airways have just bought one of the new air. I can't remember the designation number, you know, the model of it, but they've just bought either one, at least one, but maybe several of them. I was reading about it today. Uh, Sunset, his wife, I wonder if he met her in a bar. No, well, she's, uh, did it, yeah, it didn't say she was a Romanian wife, did it, did it? No idea. Uh, right, 100 baht towards your lunch. Here's 100 baht towards your lunch, became a new member. Thank you very much. So we'll see you at quarter to 11. Thai time. Barry Bluebird, talking about hamburgers, why was the vegan rejected for a job at the burger bar? Because he didn't meet the requirement. Boom, boom. Okay, enough of that. John Rhodes, Hillary Clinton hasn't been visiting Pattaya. Do you know what shocked me? I don't, I don't, that's gone over my head, but do you know what shocked me? Remember Monica Lewinsky? Monica Lewinsky. How do you pronounce her last name? I can't pronounce her. You know who I'm talking about. Bill Clinton, Monica Lewinsky. She's 50. She's just turned 50. I couldn't believe it. You know, there she was on the news, you know, uh, which I thought was just a few years ago. Beautiful, young. She's 50. God, time flies. Um, Charles Mary, the balcony business in Pattaya. Okay. Very dubious, yeah. Um, Michael, loads of scammers in London. 
especially these rickshaw drivers charged an American couple two grand on a credit card for a one mile journey. Well, he's, he's actually he's not charged them. He's actually stole from them, hasn't he? So he's he's got hold of their credit card and he's actually stole it from them, knowing that they'll probably be back in the States. But they should get that money back off the credit card company. Uh, Michael, loads of, uh, read that one. Dean Nissan, a local bloke here up in Karat admitted to killing his wife just down the road back two weeks ago. I think I read something about that as well, D. See, before I do the live streams, I go through all the news channel. I'm not a news channel, obviously, but uh, I like to just pump, give you a little, I don't like talking about politics and stuff like that, but I like the quirky kind of stories, you know, like the prisoner who got lost and then they found him again. They thought he'd escaped, which I'm going to tell you in a while. Uh, what else have I got on my list here? Um, somebody wanted me to talk about Rolex watches because I was in, um, I was in I was in MBK yesterday. That's the only place I can get shirts to fit me. There you go with my yeah, my genuine polo shirt. Genuine, right? 250 baht. Uh, but they actually do some big sizes, and this fits really nice, and the material feels nice. But let's I bought four different shirts like this, but let's see what it's like after a few washes. I don't like the ones with the big logos across here, and I just think they look stupid. It's like when you buy a fake Rolex and it's got like glass going around the outside, and it's supposed to be diamonds, it just looks so silly. Um Robin, I used to, I used to drink most nights, but not uh, on one meal a day. Work out and just drink on Saturdays. Lost weight, but just generally feel happy, sleepy. Uh, well, have a lot of energy. Okay, right. I should end this stream now because it's it's two minutes till the end. But I'll keep it going for a while. Um, at least I'll keep it going because there's plenty of chat coming. As long as it's chat, I'm, I'm going to save this stuff for later. Um, I'm going to keep it going for a while because um, I normally do the member stream at quarter to 11. But if anybody comes in at quarter to 11, think, why isn't he doing the member stream? They'll see I'm still here. So I'll, I'll but mind you, somebody might come in at 11 and say, well, he's not doing it this week because he's not on. But I'll keep it going for a while longer. Um, Robin used to drink uh, most nights, but now on the meal, meal a day, workout daily and just drink on Saturdays. Lost weight, but just generally feel happy, sleep well and have a lot of energy. Do you know what? Um, I've heard a lot about intermittent fasting where people have a meal in a window of four hours and they don't eat for maybe 18 hours, or if the maths are right there, no, 20 hours. And I asked my doctor about that. I see a female doctor. She's very, very good, expensive, med park. I'm going to change hospitals, but she's very good. And I said to her, look, I'm desperate to lose weight. I feel so unfit. For me, when I put my socks on, I get out of breath because I've got a bit of a stomach on me, right? And... Uh, she said, don't do it at your age. It's dangerous. You know, so you've got to listen to your doctor. Maybe it's not. I don't know. But she said, don't do intermittent fasting. She says, just exercise more, reduce your portions and try and eat healthier. Like, you know, I'm eating French fries every other day, pizzas, burgers. I I've got to stay away from that crap. But that's because I've been going out with um, somebody I met here who's now a friend. And we go out and you're sitting looking at this menu and you don't want to order a salad, do you? You look at this prime burger you want to eat. Um, but I do cook at home. I'm going to start ordering a lot of fresh vegetables and things and, and order at home. Uh, Dutch brother, Peter, are you going to date some lady or is your plan to stay single? Join me in the member stream and all shall be revealed. Um, right. Cholmer, so many suspi suspicious jumps. We need to open a parachute business in Paris. I remember there was a case once where a guy supposedly it was reported that he committed suicide but when they found him on the ground he had a plastic bag over his head and his hands were cable tied behind his back that's all i'm saying on that welsh 32 sorry peter cat jumped on my keyboard yeah the cat actually wrote your message not you uh daniel uh, i think some of the patia and all the rest of Thailand Flying Club does not jump. They are kindly helped to jump by some kind of mafia they end up with the wrong people borrowing money etc it can be a dangerous place. You know, it's like anything. It's when you get there, it's all shiny on the outside. Uh, there's a lot of bad stuff goes on as in everywhere. I'd love to talk more about that subject, you know, because I know a lot of things about down there. I just can't, you know, because I live here and it's YouTube and there's people out there who might watch my stream and I, I just can't talk about, it. I, I wish I could, you know, if I ever meet you one-on-one -on -one here and you ask me about it, I'll tell you. Um, Kev says, Peter, are you drinking out of boredom? Oh, certain, no, definitely not, Kev. I am not bored here at all. I used to be very bored in England. Um, I've, I've reduced my drinking a lot now. I hardly drink any beer anymore. I used to drink like five, four or five cans of, you know, pint cans of beer every night. I, I don't. I'm, I'm on to like, I probably drink one to two small bottles of San Miguel Light. That's it now. Um so I've reduced it a lot. But no, it's certainly not boredom. I actually enjoy a drink. You know, what happens? I watch a, a movie and I'm enjoying the movie. 
and uh, the beer just makes it more of an enjoyable. Uh, I don't know. I just enjoy it. Um, walking in my shoes. Uh, thanks, Peter. Yes, I have a channel. I do listen to yours on a regular basis. I like the stories, and I can re relate a lot to them. Looking forward to a meet up. Let us know if you're doing a meet up. Uh, yeah, I thought so. I have. I have actually watched a couple of your videos because you know you get suggest. I'm in Thailand, right? So you get videos suggested to you, and um, you know sometimes I think, oh, I don't know this one. Let's have a quick look. It's just it's just amazing how many YouTubers are in Thailand now. When I I mean, when I started my YouTube channel when I was in Hua Hin five years ago, I, I could count the YouTubers on, on on my hand, on maybe two hands. You know, there was probably no more than a dozen maximum. Now, I mean, there's hundreds, literally hundreds. You know, you go down to Patio and everybody's walking around with a selfie stick and they're not, you know, you, you, they're talking to the camera, you know, and there's so many YouTube channels. That, so, you know, it's Thailand. People want to be here. So they want to kind of, they think, you know, I'll fund my lifestyle here. I'll make a, a YouTube channel. But, you know, it's not it's not an easy task. You know, it's a full time job if you're serious about it. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to do any meetups because I don't I don't, I don't like being the, the center of I don't like being the center of attention. But I meet a lot of people individually. So if you want to have a coffee or a lunch sometime, uh, drop me an email and we can meet up. I, I'm not going to give out my line details there, but that, that's my email address. Uh, just remind me who you are when you write to me. And you know, uh, weekdays are better for me because we at weekend I'm tied up with um, with YouTube. Uh, Right, Paul Hoskins, should YouTubers wear a headband? Uh, not really, Paul. Um, okay, guys, look, that's it. Uh, that's the uh, one more. We'll finish with Steve's. Uh, flight prices are not bad. Just book for next month, 740 Qatar return indefinitely, not 900 or 1200 in a minute. Okay, good stuff, Steve. That's not a bad price at all. I'm going to knock it on the head now, guys, because I've got the member stream. It will be starting five minutes later tonight, 10 to 11 Thai time. Um, I hope you can join us there. So I talk about more personal things than I do in a regular stream because obviously, uh, you know, I've got to be careful in streams and you don't know who's who's listening. I've already banned two, two trolls tonight. So uh, see you guys in about 15 minutes. And uh, if you're not a member, guys, I'll, I might do a stream on Wednesday from Patia Beach. Let's see. Thanks a lot, guys. Uh, and I'll catch up with you real, real soon. Oh, 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 oh,